and I've never seen such attendance. This conference has been terrific. An event that uh, will enhance exchanges. And from here I'll be a changed person, I hope. E-Learning Africa is the premier annual conference on information and communication technologies for development, education and training on the African continent. The sixth event in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, attracted more than 1,700 participants from over 90 countries, more than 80% from Africa. 322 speakers in 65 parallel sessions explored new ways of learning. It faut vraiment en Afrique qu'on voit l'intérêt de ces tics là dans le développement de nos pays. Donc là, on ne peut pas le faire tout seul à côté. Il faut le faire avec les décideurs. 25 African ministers and deputy ministers and more than 50 high-level government officials discussed how the innovative use of technology can transform African education. In Learning Africa, we've started the, uh, collaborating at the beginning with uh, the organizer. And is for us is very critical for the continent because is uh, a kind of more than awareness raising but capacity building, best practice sharing, information and knowledge sharing. 57 companies and organizations showcase their latest learning technology products and services at the eLearning Africa exhibition. Participants were able to see and compare the most recent solutions. The benefit of the conference for us has been actually to get together with our partners um, and to find new people as well. It's a sharing experience and with the delegates we've been had the opportunity to present but we've also had the opportunity for people to come back to our stand and actually get into some in-depth conversations. N Computing has been a, a participant of eLearning Africa for a good number of years now. And I think what we've seen in that time is the interest grow and grow and grow. And it is fantastic to see the number of people that are here today visiting the uh, conference and also the number of vendors that are here today actually talking about the technologies that they can bring to bear in the ICT environment. We had a lot of visitors visiting our exhibition there. We shared a tool called iCAT and we got a lot of contributions. But also, there are a lot of partners which we have met. We've had a great turnout of people, more people than we, we've ever seen before, asking questions from digital content all the way up to learning platforms, to teacher education, and we've been very pleased to talk to all of our attendees about what Pearson can do for them. Opened by Dr. Mohamed Kharib Bilal, Vice President of the United Republic of Tanzania, eLearning Africa set out to explore a very rich selection of topics. One focus was put on nurturing the talents of the large, young population in Africa. Research from Kenya and elsewhere revealed that there is an urgent need for action. It was discovered that 91% of young people have no employable skills. Young people between the ages of 18 to around 35 who are looking for employment, unemployed youth. To bridge the skills gap, some experts suggested using e-learning in new and dynamic sectors, for example in Nollywood, the Nigerian film industry. Performing arts, music, dance and drama can actually promote employment of youth, self-reliance. And my idea is that it's not just on the actors and actresses alone. There are other areas which people don't know, like the crew members, you have the designers, you have the directors, you have the stage manager. These are areas youths are not aware of. Others highlighted how innovative technologies can boost traditional sectors and cultures. In Africa, we find that um, agriculture is the backbone of the economy. And the youth are the ones that are strong and able to do something. Now, with inf good information, we believe that um, they can be better able to be efficient in doing agricultural work. As a traditional chief, I know that uh, the traditional culture of Africa is very wide. It's very big. And so we have been losing it for quite a time. But when I go to the village, I every time have my laptop, my computer, I also have a video. So I go, I, every time I'm communicating with my fellows, which are in the village, 
So I take pictures, I uh, try to interview them as you are doing now, so that I go and put it inside my computer and later it will be online on the internet. One of the trends identified was the growing use of interactive Web 2.0 technologies and social media for educational purposes. Topics range from the rising popularity of Facebook in Tanzania to online sex education in Uganda. For young people within our sexuality education program, at the end of every topic, they produce artifacts, uh, art piece. It can also be in terms of poems. It can be in terms of uh, what message they want to give. It can be in terms of their personal testimonies. We also share these ones on the online support center so that the students whom can benefit from what the other people, the other youth are doing. My research shows very clearly that Facebook is becoming increasingly popular among students. There are more and more users for each year of students coming in. And uh, about half the students at the college roughly are now using Facebook. So they go from never having used the internet to actually start using Facebook right away. Discussions revealed that ICT infrastructures remain a big challenge. Young people urge their governments to improve internet connectivity. Formal IT help desks were suggested to overcome technical problems, not only in the corporate sector, but also in African higher education. Much time is wasted trying to get help when you have a problem with your computer. You have to carry your PC from one office to the other, which sometimes is about kilos, kilometers. And these are, these are not the best way things are handled. You can, you can write, write it in your office, just maybe log in your problem, and this will be sorted out. In 2011, a dedicated research stream was introduced, featuring topics as diverse as African digital identities and the use of collaborative tools in marginalized schooling contexts. The research stream uh, was an experiment and I think it worked very well um, and it interested a great number of people um, and I think it holds huge possibilities for um, the prospect of um, promoting knowledge production about Africa. E-Learning Africa also offered a range of exciting social and cultural events providing important spaces for extended networking. There's of course the networking okay because beyond the presentations beyond all this, there's a lot of human-to-human -human interaction and I think the networking is one of the best uh, benefits from the conference. E-Learning Africa once more proved to be the ideal platform for high-level decision makers to forge new partnerships and collaborations. I've learned that uh, between the, the African nations or the African Union and NATO, it's not too much difference in principle. You know, we, we both have the opinion we need to share a lot. We both have the opinion that uh, we have a kind of revolution in training, in education and training, and that means we have to use all the instruments, and here it is called ICT. Such discussion and knowledge of what is going right in which countries uh, will help me as Minister responsible for education determining how we should go with the, with the program, as, since as I said, it's now on the drawing board. But also it's going to help us, um, or me and experts, knowing where to go. One of the key messages of e-learning Africa 2011 was conveyed in its vivid parliamentary style debate on the pros and cons of open educational resources, the need to share. In Africa, the youth will force the institutions to share. You, don't, you may not want to share today, maybe tomorrow, but by next e-learning Africa, you'll be sharing. Take it from me. E-Learning Africa will continue its journey across the continent. The seventh conference will take place in May 2012. Mark your calendar.